Hello everyone. Today we have discussed about combustion and flame, chapter 4, class 8. Before starting this video please like and subscribe to my channel LinkedIn Pharma. Let's start. Combustion and flame, a brief introduction. Combustion is a chemical reaction between a fuel and an oxidizing agent, usually oxygen, resulting in the release of heat, light, and various products such as water vapor and carbon dioxide. It is an essential process that powers many aspects of our daily lives, from engines and power generation to cooking and heating. When a fuel undergoes combustion, it produces a visible, luminous, and often flickering phenomenon known as a flame. Flames come in various shapes and colors, depending on the fuel and conditions of combustion. Understanding combustion and flames is vital in fields like chemistry, engineering, and environmental sciences to optimize energy efficiency and minimize harmful emissions. What is combustion? Combustion is a chemical process in which a substance, known as a fuel, reacts rapidly with an oxidizing agent, usually oxygen, to produce heat, light, and often flame. This exothermic reaction releases energy by breaking the chemical bonds within the fuel molecules and forming new compounds with the oxygen. The three essential elements required for combustion are fuel, oxygen, and heat. When these elements come together, they initiate a chain reaction, leading to the release of energy in the form of heat and light. The products of combustion depend on the specific fuel and its composition but often include carbon dioxide, water vapor, and other byproducts. Combustion is a fundamental process that powers various technologies and applications, such as internal combustion engines, power generation, cooking, and heating systems. It plays a crucial role in our daily lives and has both positive and negative effects on the environment, making it a topic of significant interest in fields like chemistry, engineering, and environmental science. Combustible and non-combustible substances Combustible substances Combustible substances are materials that can undergo the process of combustion when exposed to an ignition source in an oxidizing agent, usually oxygen. In the presence of heat, these substances react with oxygen to release energy in the form of heat and light. Combustible materials are essential for generating energy and performing various tasks in our daily lives. Some examples of combustible substances include 1. Wood Wood is a common combustible material used for heating, cooking, and in the construction of buildings. When exposed to heat and oxygen, it burns and produces heat, light, and ash. 2. Gasoline Gasoline is a liquid fuel used in internal combustion engines to power vehicles. When mixed with air and ignited, it combusts to generate energy for the engine. 3. Natural gas Natural gas is a clean burning combustible fuel commonly used for cooking, heating homes, and generating electricity. 4. Paper Paper is a combustible material made from wood pulp. When exposed to flames, it burns and turns into ashes. 5. Propane Propane is a commonly used fuel for outdoor grills and heaters. It is a gas at standard temperature and pressure but can be compressed into a liquid form for storage and transportation. Non-combustible substances Non-combustible substances are materials that do not participate in the combustion process. When exposed to heat and oxygen, these substances do not burn or undergo any chemical changes. Instead, they retain their original form or may undergo physical changes like melting or decomposition. Some examples of non-combustible substances include 1. Metals Most metals, such as iron, aluminum, and copper, are non-combustible. They have high melting points and do not burn when exposed to flames. 2. Glass Glass is a non-combustible material made from melting sand and other minerals. It does not burn and remains unchanged when exposed to high temperatures. 3. Stone Stone, like granite or marble, is non-combustible and remains unaffected by exposure to flames or heat. 4. Water Water is a non-combustible substance. It can absorb heat and help extinguish fires, but it does not burn. 5. Ceramic Ceramic materials are often non-combustible due to their high resistance to heat and fire. 
Understanding the properties of combustible and non-combustible substances is crucial for safety, construction, and material selection in various applications. Ignition temperature. The ignition temperature, also known as the kindling point or auto-ignition temperature, is the minimum temperature at which a substance can spontaneously ignite and sustain combustion without the need for an external ignition source like a flame or spark. At this critical temperature, the substance's molecules have enough energy to initiate and sustain the chemical reactions involved in combustion. Different substances have varying ignition temperatures based on their chemical properties and composition. Some substances have low ignition temperatures, making them highly flammable and prone to ignition even at relatively low temperatures. On the other hand, some materials have high ignition temperatures, making them less likely to catch fire unless exposed to very high heat. Examples of ignition temperatures for different substances 1. Gasoline The ignition temperature of gasoline is typically around 495 degrees Fahrenheit to 536 degrees Fahrenheit, 257 degrees Celsius to 280 degrees Celsius. Gasoline vapors can ignite even at room temperature when mixed with air and exposed to a spark or heat source. 2. Wood. The ignition temperature of dry wood is approximately 572 degrees Fahrenheit, 300 degrees Celsius. If exposed to an open flame or high heat, dry wood can catch fire and burn. 3. Paper. The ignition temperature of paper is around 451 degrees Fahrenheit, 233 degrees Celsius. When exposed to a heat source like a match, paper can quickly ignite and burn. 4. Methane, natural gas, the ignition temperature of methane, the main component of natural gas, is about 1076 degrees Fahrenheit, 580 degrees Celsius. Methane mixed with air can ignite at this temperature or higher, causing a fire or explosion. 5. Iron, iron, a metal, has a high ignition temperature of around 2800 degrees Fahrenheit, 1538 degrees Celsius. It does not spontaneously catch fire under normal conditions and requires extremely high temperatures for combustion. Understanding the ignition temperature of various substances is crucial for fire safety, handling flammable materials, and designing fire-resistant structures and equipment. It helps prevent accidental fires and allows for the proper storage and handling of combustible substances. Unflammable substances an inflammable substance, also referred to as flammable, is a material that has the ability to catch fire easily and burn rapidly when exposed to an ignition source like a spark, flame, or heat. These substances have low ignition temperatures, making them highly susceptible to combustion. It is essential to handle and store inflammable materials with caution to prevent accidental fires and ensure safety. Examples of inflammable substances 1. Gasoline. Gasoline is a highly flammable liquid fuel commonly used in vehicles. Its low ignition temperature and ability to produce flammable vapors make it a significant fire hazard. 2. Alcohol. Many types of alcohol, such as ethanol and methanol, are flammable liquids. They are commonly used in various industrial processes, as solvents, and as fuel. 3. Propane. Propane is a flammable gas commonly used for heating cooking, and fueling gas-powered equipment like grills and camping stoves. 4. Diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is a flammable liquid used in diesel engines for transportation and power generation. 5. Butane. Butane is a flammable gas used in lighters, portable stoves, and other applications. 6. Paint thinner. Paint thinner is a flammable solvent used to dilute oil-based paints and clean painting tools. 7. Natural gas. Natural gas, primarily composed of methane, is a flammable gas used for heating, cooking, and electricity generation. 8. Acetone. Acetone is a highly flammable solvent used in nail polish removers, paints, and industrial processes. 9. Aerosol sprays. Many aerosol products, such as hairsprays, deodorants, and spray paints, contain flammable propellants. 10. Wooden paper. Wooden paper are considered inflammable materials due to their ability to catch fire and burn easily when exposed to an ignition source. 
it is important to handle inflammable substances carefully, store them properly, and use them in appropriate conditions to minimize the risk of fires and ensure personal safety. Proper labeling and adherence to safety guidelines are crucial when dealing with such materials. How do we control fire? Controlling fire is essential to prevent it from spreading, causing damage, and endangering lives. Here are some key points on how to control fire. 1. Early Detection Install smoke detectors and fire alarms in buildings to detect fires at their early stages. Early detection allows for a quicker response, increasing the chances of controlling the fire before it grows larger. 2. Raise the alarm. As soon as a fire is detected, raise the alarm to alert occupants and initiate an evacuation process. 3. Evacuation. Ensure that everyone in the affected area or building evacuates immediately and follows the designated escape routes to a safe location. 4. Call emergency services. Dial the emergency services number, example 911, to report the fire and provide necessary details, such as the location and size of the fire. 5. Utilize fire extinguishers. If the fire is small and contained, use the appropriate fire extinguisher to put out the flames. Remember to follow the pass method. Pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep from side to side. 6. Use fire blankets. Fire blankets can be used to smother small fires involving flammable liquids or clothing. Wrap the blanket around the affected person or object to cut off the oxygen supply to the fire. 7. Fire hose and sprinkler systems. In larger fires, activate fire hose reels or sprinkler systems to douse the flames and control the spread of the fire. 8. Close doors. When evacuating, close doors behind you to prevent the fire from spreading to other areas and to limit its oxygen supply. 9. Stay low. If smoke is present, stay close to the ground while evacuating to avoid inhalation of toxic smoke and gases. 10. Seal off ventilation. Close windows and doors to limit the fire's access to fresh air, which can help slow down its growth. 11. Fireproof doors and materials. Install fireproof doors and use fire-resistant materials in building construction to prevent the fire from spreading through compartments. 12. Coordinate with authorities. Provide information about the fire's location and intensity to the arriving emergency responders to assist in their firefighting efforts. 13. Follow fire safety plans. Implement and regularly practice fire safety plans to ensure that everyone knows what to do in case of a fire emergency. Remember that personal safety is paramount when attempting to control a fire. If the fire becomes too large or uncontrollable, evacuate immediately and wait for professional firefighters to arrive. Types of Combustion 1. Complete Combustion Complete combustion occurs when a fuel reacts with an adequate supply of oxygen, resulting in the complete oxidation of the fuel to produce. Only carbon dioxide and water is the primary products. This type of combustion is efficient and yields the maximum amount of heat energy. Examples of complete combustion include a. Burning natural gas, methane, in a gas stove, where methane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. B. Combustion of gasoline in an internal combustion engine, where the hydrocarbons in gasoline react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. 2. Incomplete combustion. Incomplete combustion occurs when there is a limited supply of oxygen during the combustion process, resulting in the production of carbon monoxide and unburned carbon particles, soot, in addition to carbon dioxide and water. This type of combustion is less efficient and produces less heat energy compared to complete combustion. Examples of incomplete combustion include a. Burning wood in a poorly ventilated environment, where limited oxygen leads to the formation of carbon monoxide and soot along with carbon dioxide and water. b. Incomplete burning of fossil fuels in car engines with inefficient combustion, resulting in the emission of carbon monoxide and particulate matter in vehicle exhaust. 3. Spontaneous combustion. Spontaneous combustion occurs when a substance or material ignites without the application of an external heat source. This type of combustion is often due to heat generated by the material's own chemical or biological processes, leading to autoignition. Examples of spontaneous combustion include 
Self heating of oily rags or compost piles, where the decomposition process generates heat and can lead to ignition without a separate ignition source. 4. Explosive combustion. Explosive combustion is an extremely rapid form of combustion accompanied by a sudden release of energy in the form of a shockwave or explosion. This type of combustion occurs when a fuel air mixture is rapidly ignited and burns at an accelerated rate. Examples of explosive combustion include a. Detonation of dynamite, where the rapid combustion of the explosive material generates a powerful shockwave. b. Combustion of a fuel-air mixture in internal combustion engines at certain conditions that cause knocking or detonation. 5. Rapid combustion. Rapid combustion refers to a type of combustion that occurs at an exceptionally fast rate, releasing a significant amount of heat and light in a short period. The reaction kinetics in rapid combustion are much higher than in regular combustion processes. While rapid combustion can occur in both complete and incomplete forms, it is typically associated with intense and sudden reactions. Examples of rapid combustion include a. Combustion of hydrogen gas, H2, in the presence of oxygen, which results in a rapid reaction and the release of a large amount of heat and water vapor. b. Burning of some metals such as magnesium, Mg, or aluminum, Al, in the form of fine particles or shavings. The high surface area of the metal particles allows for rapid oxidation when exposed to air, leading to intense heat and a bright flame. Understanding the different types of combustion is essential for safety, energy efficiency, and environmental considerations in various industrial processes and applications. Explosion an explosion is a sudden and violent release of energy, often accompanied by a shock wave and a rapid expansion of gases. It leads to a burst of pressure and intense heat, causing damage and potential harm to the surrounding area. Explosions can be caused by various factors, such as chemical reactions, gas leaks, or the ignition of volatile materials. Flame a flame is the visible, luminous, and often flickering part of a fire resulting from the combustion of a gaseous or vaporized fuel. It is the zone where the fuel and oxygen react and release energy in the form of heat and light. Flames come in various shapes, colors, and intensities, depending on factors such as the type of fuel, the availability of oxygen, and the combustion conditions. Examples of materials that form a flame on burning wood. When wood is burned, the cellulose and other components in the wood vaporize and react with oxygen in the air to produce a yellow or orange flame with a characteristic crackling sound. Paper Burning paper releases volatile compounds, which ignite to form a yellow flame with a relatively low temperature. Gasoline Gasoline is a volatile liquid fuel that forms a blue flame with a high temperature when ignited. Propane Propane is a commonly used fuel in gas grills and camping stoves. It burns with a blue flame when mixed with air and ignited. Natural gas. Natural gas, mainly composed of methane, produces a blue flame when burned in stoves, water heaters, and other appliances. Candle wax. The wax in a candle vaporizes and reacts with oxygen to produce a yellow or orange flame when the wick is lit. Alcohol. Ethanol and other alcohol-based fuels produce a blue or light blue flame when burned in alcohol lamps or camping stoves. Kerosene. Kerosene is a fuel commonly used in lamps and heaters. It burns with a yellow flame when vaporized and ignited. Hydrogen. Hydrogen gas burns with a nearly invisible flame, producing only a faint blue color, making it difficult to see under certain conditions. Acetylene. Acetylene is a fuel used in welding torches. It burns with a hot and smoky flame, often with a characteristic black soot. These are just a few examples of materials that form flames when burned. The characteristics of the flame depend on the specific fuel and its combustion properties. Flames play a vital role in various applications, from heating and cooking to industrial processes and lighting. Structure of flame The structure of a flame is a complex and dynamic phenomenon that can be divided into several distinct zones. These zones differ in temperature, color, and chemical composition, reflecting the various stages of combustion within the flame. The typical structure of a flame can be divided into three primary zones. 1. 
innermost zone or combustion zone blue cone this is the innermost region of the flame where the actual combustion of the fuel takes place it is characterized by the highest temperature and appears as a blue or bluish white cone in this zone the fuel gaseous or vaporized mixes with the surrounding oxygen and undergoes rapid combustion the high temperature here is a result of efficient fuel air mixing and the abundance of oxygen due to the high temperature most of the fuel is completely oxidized resulting in the formation of water vapor and carbon dioxide 2 intermediate zone or luminous zone yellow cone the intermediate zone surrounds the combustion zone and is cooler than the innermost region it appears as a yellow or orange cone and is less efficient in terms of combustion in this zone there is insufficient oxygen to completely oxidize all the fuel leading to the formation of small soot particles and carbon monoxide these particles emit light giving the flame its characteristic yellowish color the luminous zone is still rich in unburned fuel making it an essential part of a typical flame 3 outermost zone or non luminous zone transparent outer cone the outermost zone of the flame is the coolest region and appears almost transparent It is located around the luminous zone and contains a mixture of air and combustion products. In this zone, the temperature drops significantly and the concentration of unburned fuel decreases further. The transparent outer cone is essential for heat transfer from the flame to the surrounding environment. It's important to note that the structure of a flame can vary depending on factors such as the type of fuel, the availability of oxygen, and the combustion conditions. Flames can exhibit different shapes, sizes, and colors based on these factors. The structure of a flame is a dynamic system, and the different zones continuously interact and change as the combustion process progresses. Understanding the structure of a flame is essential for optimizing combustion efficiency and minimizing the emission of pollutants in various combustion processes. Fuel. A fuel is a substance or material that undergoes combustion to release energy. typically in the form of heat light or both fuels are used in various applications to power engines generate electricity produce heat for cooking and heating and more they play a crucial role in modern society by providing the energy needed to run vehicles power plants and industrial processes fuels can be broadly categorized into three main types one fossil fuels These are derived from ancient organic materials and include coal, petroleum, crude oil, and natural gas. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources, meaning they are finite and take millions of years to form. They are the most widely used sources of energy but contribute to environmental issues such as greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution. 2. Renewable fuels. These fuels are derived from renewable resources such as biofuels e.g. biodiesel and ethanol solar energy wind energy and hydroelectric power unlike fossil fuels renewable fuels are sustainable and do not deplete over time they offer a more environmentally friendly alternative to fossil fuels 3 nuclear fuels these fuels are used in nuclear reactors to generate nuclear energy the most common nuclear fuel is enriched uranium Nuclear power is a low carbon energy source but is subject to concerns about safety and radioactive waste management. Fuel efficiency. Fuel efficiency refers to the measure of how effectively a fuel is converted into useful energy, usually expressed as a ratio of output energy to input energy. In the context of transportation, it is commonly used to describe how efficiently a vehicle utilizes fuel to travel a certain distance. The higher the fuel efficiency, the less fuel is consumed for a given amount of work done. Factors affecting fuel efficiency: one, engine design. Modern engines are designed to optimize fuel efficiency, taking into account factors like combustion efficiency, compression ratio, and mechanical losses. Two, vehicle weight. Lighter vehicles generally require less energy to move, leading to better fuel efficiency. Three, aerodynamics. Reducing aerodynamic drag can improve fuel efficiency, especially at higher speeds. 4. Transmission. Proper gear ratios in the transmission can help the engine operate at its most efficient RPM revolutions per minute. 5. Tire pressure. 
maintaining proper tire pressure reduces rolling resistance, leading to better fuel efficiency. 6. Driving habits, efficient driving practices, such as smooth acceleration and deceleration, can improve fuel economy. Benefits of fuel efficiency 1. Reduced fuel consumption, improved fuel efficiency helps reduce the overall consumption of fossil fuels, conserving natural resources and lowering greenhouse gas emissions. 2. Cost savings, higher fuel efficiency means spending less on fuel, resulting in cost savings for individuals and businesses. 3. Environmental impact. Enhanced fuel efficiency contributes to lowering air pollution and reducing the carbon footprint of transportation and energy production. 4. Energy security. Reducing dependence on fossil fuels by improving fuel efficiency enhances energy security and reduces vulnerability to supply. Disruptions. To achieve a sustainable and energy efficient future, the development and adoption of advanced technologies and alternative fuels are crucial. Improving fuel efficiency across various sectors, from transportation to energy production, is a key component of global efforts to address climate change and promote sustainable development. Calorific value. Calorific value, also known as heating value or energy value, is a measure of the energy content of a substance or fuel. It indicates the amount of heat energy released when a unit mass or volume of the fuel undergoes complete combustion. The calorific value is typically expressed in units of energy per unit mass, for example, joules per kilogram or British thermal units per pound, or energy per unit volume, for example, joules per cubic meter or British thermal units per cubic foot. There are two main types of calorific values. 1. Higher calorific value or gross calorific value. The higher calorific value represents the total heat energy released during the complete combustion of a fuel, assuming that the water vapor produced during combustion is in a gaseous state and not condensed. It takes into account the heat released from the water vapor formed during combustion. The higher calorific value is usually used for gaseous fuels like natural gas. 2. Lower calorific value or net calorific value. The lower calorific value accounts for the heat energy released during the complete combustion of a fuel, considering that the water vapor formed during combustion is condensed back to liquid water. This means that the heat energy carried away by the water vapor is not included in the lower calorific value. The lower calorific value is more commonly used for solid and liquid fuels like coal, oil, and biomass. Calorific values are important for understanding the energy content and efficiency of various fuels. They are crucial for energy-related calculations, such as determining the energy output of power plants, evaluating the efficiency of combustion processes, and estimating the fuel consumption of vehicles and appliances. Different types of fuels have different calorific values due to variations in their chemical composition. Fossil fuels like coal, petroleum, and natural gas typically have high calorific values, making them valuable sources of energy. Renewable fuels like biodiesel and ethanol also have calorific values, but they often have lower values compared to fossil fuels. Efficient utilization of fuels relies on understanding their calorific values and maximizing the energy extracted from them during combustion processes. Ideal fuel. An ideal fuel is a theoretical concept representing a fuel with properties that make it highly desirable for various applications. While no fuel perfectly meets all the criteria of an ideal fuel, the concept helps guide the development and selection of fuels for specific purposes. Characteristics of an ideal fuel typically include 1. High calorific value. An ideal fuel should have a high energy content or calorific value meaning it releases a large amount of heat energy per unit mass or volume during combustion. 2. Abundant and accessible. Ideally, fuel should be readily available in large quantities and easily accessible to meet the energy demands of a wide range of applications. 3. Easy to store and transport. An ideal fuel should be easy to store, handle, and transport without significant safety risks or logistical challenges. 4. Clean combustion. An ideal fuel would burn cleanly, producing minimal pollutants and greenhouse gases, thus having a low environmental impact. 5. 
cost effective the cost of an ideal fuel should be reasonable and competitive allowing for widespread use without excessive financial burden 6 safe handling an ideal fuel should be safe to handle minimizing the risks of accidents during storage transportation and usage 7 renewable while not a strict requirement for an ideal fuel Renewable fuels are increasingly sought after due to concerns about fossil fuel depletion and environmental sustainability. Types of fuels. Fuels can be classified into various categories based on their origin, state, and properties. Here are some common types of fuels. 1. Fossil fuels. Derived from ancient organic matter, fossil fuels include coal, petroleum, crude oil, and natural gas. They are the primary sources of energy for the modern world. 2. Renewable fuels. These fuels are derived from renewable resources and include biofuels, for example, biodiesel, ethanol, solar energy, wind energy, and hydropower. 3. Nuclear fuels. Used in nuclear reactors to produce nuclear energy, the most common nuclear fuel is enriched uranium. 4. Biomass. Derived from organic materials like wood, agricultural residues, and waste, biomass can be used as a fuel directly or converted into biofuels. 5. Hydrogen. Hydrogen gas can be used as fuel in fuel cells and certain combustion engines. When hydrogen reacts with oxygen, it produces water vapor as the only byproduct, making it environmentally friendly. 6. Coal bed methane, a form of natural gas found in coal seams, extracted for use as a fuel. 7. Liquefied petroleum gas, a mixture of hydrocarbon gases, primarily propane and butane, used as fuel in heating, cooking, and transportation. 8. Methane hydrates, a potential future source of natural gas, methane hydrates are a combination of methane and water found in Arctic regions and deep ocean sediments. Each type of fuel has its advantages and disadvantages, and the choice of fuel for a specific application depends on factors such as cost, availability, environmental impact, and technological requirements. The ongoing shift toward more sustainable and environmentally friendly fuels has led to increased interest in renewable energy sources and cleaner alternatives to traditional fossil fuels. Burning of fuels leads to harmful products. Yes, the burning of fuels can indeed lead to the production of harmful products and pollutants. When fuels undergo combustion, chemical reactions occur between the fuel and oxygen, releasing energy in the form of heat and light. Along with this energy release, various byproducts are formed, some of which can be detrimental to human health and the environment. Here are some of the harmful products produced during fuel combustion. 1. Carbon monoxide. Incomplete combustion of fuels can result in the production of carbon monoxide, a colorless and odorless gas. Carbon monoxide is highly toxic and can be lethal in high concentrations. It interferes with the body's ability to transport oxygen, leading to carbon monoxide poisoning. 2. Particulate matter, burning fuels, especially in vehicles and industrial processes, can release particulate matter into the air. These tiny particles can be inhaled deep into the lungs and are associated with respiratory problems, cardiovascular issues, and other health impacts. 3. Nitrogen oxides. Combustion at high temperatures, as seen in engines and power plants, can lead to the formation of nitrogen oxides. These compounds contribute to the formation of smog and acid rain and can irritate the respiratory system. 4. Sulfur dioxide. Fuels containing sulfur, such as coal and oil, release sulfur dioxide when burned. SO2 is a major contributor to acid rain and can cause respiratory problems and other health issues. 5. Greenhouse gases. The burning of fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide, CO2, and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These gases trap heat and contribute to global warming and climate change. 6. Volatile organic compounds. Certain fuels and their combustion byproducts can release volatile organic compounds. VOCs are a precursor to ground-level ozone formation and can have negative effects on air quality and human health. 7. Hazardous air pollutants. Burning certain fuels can release hazardous air pollutants, which are toxic and can cause a range of health issues, 
including cancer and respiratory problems. To mitigate the harmful effects of fuel combustion, various measures are taken, including the use of cleaner and more efficient combustion technologies, the adoption of renewable energy sources, and the implementation of emission control regulations. These efforts aim to reduce the emission of harmful products and pollutants and minimize the negative impact of burning fuels on both human health and the environment. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.